morning hello and good day how is everyone i'm really good thank you for asking yeah me too it's saturday my hair is doing oh but look i know my it's hair, the it's just... most glorious hair ever i love mm. it it's wonderful we are warm and cozy quilting we are in columbia illinois oh i'm supposed to tell him that i am jason and i'm danielle i'm in and... charge of all things long army you're in charge of everything 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 you guys, it's a lot. It is a lot. Okay. Um, uh, yes. So we're in Colombia, and they're the number one customer. That is they know true that. statement as well. I, know that? I hope they do know that. This seems like it's in my way. It is kind of in the way. Uh, just put it over here. Okay. I'm on coffee. I'm on coffee mode right now anyway. Yes, you are. It's okay. Oh, good Lord. All right. A wonderful day in the so, neighborhood. Yeah. Beautiful day for a neighbor. Hope you're all having a wonderful Saturday. Hope the New Year's treating you well. For sure. Um, we're back to doing this here gig. Mm -hmm. uh, we are on Facebook and we're also streaming live on the YouTube. So That's right. Remember if to hit the share. On YouTube, yeah. Hit that subscribe button. Right. Tell your friends about us. Exactly. One day somebody's going to go, oh my gosh, these two are hilarious. They're funny. We're going to make them see so it. popular. You got see it. And they're going to oh, tell everyone. Oh, look at that. We got Eileen out there on the YouTube and we got... Kelly out there on the YouTube. Hello. Nice. Hello, good hello. morning. Good morning. So you can all go out there too. It's just the same. So it's fun. Yeah. Um, so Deborah did say that my hair looks sharp. And so, or maybe, maybe, she, oh, Jason. I'm talking to you. But it is, it is, um, <laughs> there was frost on the everything this morning. Frost equals I have to blow dry my hair. And then it looks good. And then I think, why the heck don't I do this more often? Anyway. I don't know. It's hair dry. It's hair dryer season. It is. Who knew? No, I didn't. Um, I don't dry my, my hair. My hair dryer has paint on it. <laughs> because you, our children yeah, have used right. it when doing arts and crafts. I'm not saying that they learned that from like, somewhere, but they learned some, it from At some point, maybe I should get a new hair dryer. Maybe. I mean, eh, it works. It works. And I don't use it that much. Although, if I had like this awesome one... What would be awesome? It still just has to dry your hair. You know what okay. would make it awesome? If it did want your dinner for you. Exactly. Or did laundry. Right. Does it do any of that? No. Then it ain't worth getting. Right. You just keep what you got. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so Deborah said it's snowing and Johnson said E Tennessee. Yeah. Ooh. Well, that's mountainy land anyway, isn't it? Like I don't know. I'm assuming it is. It sounds like it is. But it's south. Like so What's south? It's east. It's southish. Bows in a circle <laughs> or something. I don't know. I'm okay. not a geologist. Oh, this is. This what is are you doing? It'll flash at me. My phone will flash at me. I don't Sweet want it over goodness. here. Sweet Golly gracious. Okay. So then, um, hi, Kathy and Carol. Hello. And good morning, family from Diane. Mm -hmm. And hello to Dolores. Hello. It is a good sewing day for sure. It feels like this whole week. Thursday was rain, gloom, doom. Right. All the <laughs> things. Dumb. It's better to sit inside and sew some things together. Friday was better. Year. Friday was better. Saturday's okay, but you know, it's yeah, cold. Um, Victoria, um, our 16 year old, is a speech kid. Yes. And this morning she had a tournament that she had to be at. She had to leave the house by 5 30. Um, if, no, I'm sorry, she had to be at the school at 5 30. Let's back up. Um, 5.30, she's supposed to be at the school. And at 5.20, she walks out of the house, which is totally fine. We live three minutes from school. It's no not problem. fine when you deal with frost. And then there was frost. And she called me, and I'm like, uh, I was already up. I had talked to her, said, you know, good luck today, whatever. And, and she's calling me, and I'm like, what the heck? Is she still out there? Yeah. And she's like, how do I get frost off quickly? And I'm like... You need time and heat. You got a scraper out there? Yeah, I tried, but that just made it worse. I'm like, I'll just, I'm coming out. I don't need you to come out. I, it's okay. And I'm, I'm coming out. So I went out and helped oh, her. We got it. And she goes, it. I'm supposed to pick up Hannah. I'm like, you're picking somebody up and you're not leaving until, okay, no. Timing. Timing's not a strong suit sometimes for her. And then as she was, uh, she's closing the door, she's leaving. I said, January. February. 
you have to leave 10 minutes earlier because you okay. have to clean the car off. Do better. Anyway. Do better. Yeah. Anyway, so good luck to her today. Yeah, yeah. Um, if she's watching us, I'm, I'm telling her business. Doubt that. <laughs> well, she might be. That's she's possible. hanging out in the. Anyway. Um, okay, yeah, people are saying you look great with your hairdo. And we have. Okay. Hello, Linda. What's that? Oh, from NW? I don't know what NW is. What's NW, Linda? You gotta let me know. I, I went through all the states in my brain. Really? Because I what the heck that is so North I Wales. Feel, I feel really bad that I don't know. I don't know. NW. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. And uh yeah, Diane likes your haircut too. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Morning, Mary. Hello. And hello to Karen. Good morning, Rochelle. Good to see you. Saw her yesterday. Good to see you again though. Um, good morning, Joanne. And Cold day, staying in so. Good morning for, from Julie, Jason, and uh, to us. And Sadie behind. J uh, Sadie is not here today. She got the day off. But I'm sure she's watching. She could she be She could watching. still be known that she was said hello to. Yes, hello, absolutely. Um, and uh, good morning to, oh gosh, people are jumping on. I know, so I love it. pushes it. it down. Anyway, good morning, Wendy and uh, Debbie. Another Debbie. We, there's multiple. I'm sorry. It's okay. Morning, it's Heather. Right. I get it. Hello, April. 20 degrees in Northwest Ohio, but the sun is shining. Yeah, oh, so that's better oh. than, you know, Thursday when it was raining. Yeah, Kathy, teenagers, yeah, for sure. Um, good morning, Linda and Diane. Hello, Vicki. She's on YouTube and having coffee and breakfast. It's nice. a beautiful day. Way to do it. Nancy from Tennessee, granddaughter is in Johnson City. So hey, in college, nice, yeah, nice. Cool. We got people who you know can relate to each other. They get it. Mm -hmm. We are yeah, exactly. That's what we're all about here, right? Right. Building Absolutely. communities, hanging out. It is so much fun. I do enjoy it. All right. So that was fun saying hi to the guys. Um, again, if you're jumping on, feel free to say hi. We may say hi back. I don't know. We got things to get to. Tough stuff to talk about. Lots to talk about today. So we're continuing the Quilting 101 series of conversations. Basically, you're getting started. What do you do? What's the next step? Today, we're talking about fabric preparation. Right. You we're bought not... that fabric. What do you do? We talked about the quilt police last week. Oh, right. <sighs> we learned about Shauna Decky. Right. Mm -hmm. And her whole made up life um <laughs> yeah but, you know locking people up and locking stuff like that. people up that story ever i, do I was that. so okay so um we we had i had to watch after yeah. uh since i wasn't on last week <laughs> and i'm watching that and i'm going you totally had sadie the whole, oh, the time. whole time the whole time sold it you had her the whole time and then mm -hmm. he finally was like, oh, it's all made up. And she's like, what? <laughs> I know, I know. And anyway, so <laughs> and we have Cheryl and Cheryl, back-to-back -back Cheryls. Good morning. And it's not just a good It's a morning. good. It's good morning, Cheryl. Morning. Thank you, Jean. From, Appreciate yeah, that. And then good morning to the other Cheryl. <laughs> Hello, Cheryl. Uh, and do you like that? Isn't that the best thing ever? Uh, we got a sample in the mail. And I'm like, what are you going to do with that? And she says, oh. I said, I'm going to make that. It came, so, so we I got this sample of threads, you know, like from a company that wants us to try out their threads. Oh, so is that what like, it was okay. from? I didn't But pay then attention. there was some fabric and stuff thrown in there like, hey, make this little. So he pieced it and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, he birthed it. I birthed it. You weirdly. did. You didn't even know, painful. but you did. It was painful. Anyway, it wasn't that painful, but it was fun. <laughs> uh, no, Cheryl, no, there's no judgment here. No. Maybe a little bit of mockery. Maybe, maybe a bit. <laughs> I kid, obviously. Okay, um, I didn't think about this. But what's that? I'm going to have to look at uh, when these classes are. And oh, stuff like that. Yeah. my good lord. <laughs> okay. Well, that was. I got it figured out. Judge, no, no. you got it figured yep. out. I'm so, somebody got to have this figured out. Yep. All right, so we got some things to talk about before we get into the should you wash, should you starch, should you iron conversation. These are all right. very important things that you. What need do you do with that fabric? You fabric. bought it, and and you're gonna you're gonna make something. Right. What should you do to prep your fabric before you start? Right. So, before we do that, though, a couple things to remember. First and foremost, local quilt shop day. Mm -hmm. It's coming. Yes. January twenty eighth. Right. It's not next Saturday. It's the Saturday after, so the last Saturday of the month. Right. If you don't live local to us and you can't come in to see us that's fine but it's a great day to get out and visit your local quilt shop 
If you haven't been in there in a minute, go in and say hi to everybody. Right. Uh, we worry about you. I worry about you all the time. Right. All the time. I sleep. I sit up at night wondering. <laughs> I hope they're okay. <laughs> I'm doesn't. not there to take care of them. I don't know what's going to happen. It's Barely terrible. he remembers things that I tell him that he's supposed to be worried about. <laughs> well, that's true, too. <laughs> not the point. Point is, Local Quilt Shop Day is January 28th. Get out there, support your local quilt shop or shops. Maybe you can visit a couple in the sure. same day. You know, yeah. it doesn't have to be your favorite quilt shop. Just support the local quilt shop. So go out and visit them. I'm sure we'll do some fun I'm things sure we're going to have something in shop mm -hmm. that's going to be worthwhile yeah. visiting yeah. us that day as yeah. well. And yeah, stuff la last, year we, last year we gave away a fat quarter, which I, and most people didn't even know we were doing that. Right. But we had, it was so busy. It was, it was a good Lots time. of people. Coming out to hang out with us. And we did have something awesome. for the local, or the not local people. We did a thing for mm -hmm. the online. So we'll, we'll probably have something. So just stay tuned for that. It'll be wonderful. Um, the Aww. other thing we have going on. Dolores said, I wish I had a friendly shop near me. I know. Why don't we have multiple locations yet? <laughs> we are still a very tight, small staff. We like what we got going on here. We'll uh, so it's work hard on for us teleportation to be in two places. Yes, I know. I talked about that the other day. If we could just get Who that going. Who has this ability? Somebody has got to have this. Oh, and see, <laughs> people are saying local is 70 miles away. Ooh. Yeah. Good so, see, golly. so, Dolores, am I more than, are we more than 70 miles for you? Maybe we could still. <laughs> I mean, it's a long drive. That's it's a right. long drive. Like I said, we'll do something for you people that are not local that you can't make it in. But mm -hmm. if you can make it in, that's always fun, too. Yeah. Um, also, we'll work on teleportation. <laughs> right. <No promises. laughs> yeah. Jason's been working on that out in the garage for months. It hasn't really taken off yet. But <laughs> Just hiding there. Oh. That's all. <laughs> Not because I have two teenage girls, but because oh, it's safer. What can you do? I'm joking. Like, I anyway. have time to myself. Are you kidding me? <laughs> all right. So that's happening the 28th. Also happening on the 28th mm -hmm. is the last Saturday of the month. Mm -hmm. It is International Mystery Quilt Day. Right. So you guys are working on your International Mystery Quilts. I see you posting them out there on the Quilters Collective. Mm -hmm. Awesome. But I'm still hoping you're planning on coming in on the 28th at 9.30 to show off and do the show and tell of your finished quilt. Because honestly, they always look better in person. Not because your right. photography skills aren't the best, but because the camera never does it justice. Right. So this is January Mystery Quilt. I did we this will one. let you in at 9.15. We will let you in the door at 9.15. We'll we will live. lock the door. We will lock the door at 9.22. <laughs> I don't know. We'll, at some point. I don't but know. we go live for everybody else that can't make it in at 9.30. Right. You do not have to get on camera. We will have a designated human being that will, that will hold, hold your quilt up mm -hmm. so everybody can see it. Yes. We will not be on camera. I don't want to put anybody on camera. Just your quilt. Right. So that way you can come on in, hang out, see people. And get people back can life. ooh and ah at your quilt. And oh, it's, it's so much fun. Yeah. Also, like, yeah, it just makes it, it just is so much fun. Also, if you have your January quilt top done, it doesn't have to be quilted. It just has to be pieced. Mm -hmm. Borders are optional on this one. So if you have borders, great. If you don't, that's fine. You will leave that Saturday with your February pattern for free if you have January done. So Pam's watching us in Chile, Alabama. Okay. Everybody's cold right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, she can only watch a few minutes. She's got a granddaughter there. Ooh, fun. That's got to be a lot of fun. That'll be a good time. And yeah, so um, anyway, good to see you on. Absolutely. Um, also be aware that we do have the 100 Modern Block event or so along going on. Um, mm -hmm. If you haven't been to your first class yet, you got this Tuesday and this Friday um, mm -hmm. coming up. Mm -hmm. Those are also going to be Zoom classed. So right. if you're not local and you want to participate in that, we could probably squeeze you into a Zoom, but the in-person ones are pretty much full at this point. Correct. So yeah. 9 a.m. is the start time for those classes. If you need if you have, if you need questions, Sorry, if you need questions, if you need questions, I have so Jason many. Jason has so many questions. So many no, questions. Anyway, if you have any questions, just reach out to us. How does the speed um, of light work? Anyway, <laughs> anyway, then we then then we'll get you. All Let started. us know. Uh, Solaire. Oh, I think I have an image for Solaire. If you need a block mm. of the month, I've got like. Just a couple spots left it's on so this. so pretty. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's all batik. It's done by Banyan Batik Fabrics. Uh, the pattern is from Bound to Be Quilting. There's YouTube videos that go along with this. We are meeting once a month in person to talk about the blocks that are coming up. Uh, just trying to really push our skills this year. Right. It is for sure, I would put it in the intermediate class. Absolutely. But 
if you're a confident beginner and you're good at following directions, really, that's all it is, is being able to follow directions. Well, um, I have a, I have a really good time at following directions that are step by step that are uh, for a quilt. Mm -hmm. I get a little bit out of sorts when things become three dimensional. So, like, I don't do so well with making a bag. Oh, for some reason, my brain went straight to a jungle gym. Like. <laughs> It's three dimensional. <laughs> so she stays away from jungle gym. They're horrifying. I don't build those with fabric. No, no you don't. Um, but so I so I do find that yet? I do find that bag patterns because they're then telling you, okay, now turn this right side. Uh, they I get a little bit confused, but I have not been at all confused. I mean, also by having the videos, you have the you know resource available exactly and they do a really good job we've watched the videos they are they doing a wonderful job i love mm -hmm. what they're doing so mm -hmm. absolutely wonderful mm -hmm. all right so that's kind of the majority of the important things that we want to talk about now let's get into oh those yeah, i right. forgot about that i don't have it classes on here okay, we have right. classes that's so we have a lot about. of classes coming up so actually we have a class going on right now and it is for the regular the rope basket class yes so we started off with the rope basket class. Then we have an advanced rope basket class, but we also have, so I wanted to turn it around this way first because it's a heart-shaped rope basket. So if you've already made the, you could, this is, you could do this if you've not made any of the rope baskets. You can start here. This is beginner friendly. You can start with the uh, heart-shaped one. Um, but if you've done the other and you just want to figure this out and you want to come in for another class, this is actually next Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, correct? Yeah, the 21st. Mm -hmm. And that's from 9 to noon. Mm -hmm. So uh, go on our website, sign up, ask me questions here. We'll get you taken care of. But you, it, the advanced class, you have to have the first class before you can take the advanced. That mm -hmm. makes sense. But this, you do not have to have. There's no prerequisite. Okay. It's always hard for me to say. That's a rough one. Um, Cues. Anyway. They really throw people off, especially right. in quilting. So then you can absolutely sign up for this and come in and do that next Saturday. Yes. Um, okay. We also have. A beginning paper piecing class. I kind of want to take this class myself. I want you to take this class. Can I I'm take this class? This beginning oh. paper piecing. Who wants to come take a class so, with me? That would be really cool. Jason, I mean, I have a hard time with paper piecing because I turn things around yeah. for me. But you, the precision that you get with paper piecing, I feel like you're going to go, how do we paper piece everything? I'm going to paper piece all the things. So, Man, you're going to, can you imagine Christmas gifts? Oh, they're going to be awesome. <laughs> Super so, precisely folded. Paper piecing. Mm -hmm. I don't know what day of the week this is. Is the problem is that, the that I'm having? Yeah. Um, well, so this 2nd. is February second. That is a Thursday. It is a Thursday, mm -hmm. and it's from one to four. Oh, I could do that. You could do that. So uh, unless I have a class that day. Anyway, I I'm do not, not. Gonna worry about your schedule right now. I'm talking to these people. Okay. So the class, I believe, is $35, and then there is the kit to make the whole thing, which includes backing and mm -hmm. all the fabric for the top, um, is, I believe, $19 I or believe something like correct. that. Anyway, the, so we'll there's a kit that you have to purchase, but yeah, you don't even have to come in b beforehand. A lot of times on classes, you have to come pick out your fabric mm -hmm. beforehand, and then that means two trips here. This class you do not because you're buying this kit. Everybody's going to make the same one. If you tell me you hate blue, too bad. You're making it with blue. So <laughs> donate, the thing. donate this one. Get, make you're yourself new one. A, a paper piecing class to start off with because you mm -hmm. want to learn how to paper piece. Right. Once you realize I love doing this, then you're going to go and do it again and again and again. Exactly. And it's you can make more of these, and it'll be a great gift to have. I just think it's so cute, and it is a very uh, simple project. But you're going to learn the technique, and you're going to have a project that's finished. Yeah. Makes for sense. Sure. Okay. Um, the last one I wanted to talk about is introduction to quilt piecing. Here it is. So this is a three session class. Mm -hmm. um, there's one class that's like all day, okay. uh, February 18th. It is a nine to four. That way we could really get a lot of information in that. Then the next two classes are just three hour shifts, okay. three hour days. Um, 
And they're Saturdays. So if you're new to this and you're like, quilt shops, they always have classes during the week, during the day. That is true. We have a lot of people who sign up for those classes that are during we the week. We have a larger day. demographic that are retired and don't sure. have to work on a regular exactly. schedule. Exactly. But so. usually my new people who really want to get into this and want to learn more still work. Yes. And that's totally fine. So I'm I trying to work. I always try to make figure out the ways to make it so that everyone can join in. I wish mm -hmm. I could do more Zoom things. I can't at this point. Um hoping that with 100 block that will really help me kind of see what else I can do right. for, for Zoom. But anyway, so um, introduction to quilt piecing. So you're going to make a top. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're going to make a nine patch mm -hmm. and a pinwheel. So you're going to learn how to make two different blocks. You're going to learn how to set them together. You're going to learn how to put a border on. First of all, that sounds like, oh, that's not that much. There's the prepping the fabric, there's the cutting the fabric, you're going to get really good. Like So a lot of times people think, oh my gosh, I can't take that class because I've never even used a rotary cutter. And I think this, this class is the way to go. I've had people that have taken this class um, that uh, previously that just had been doing this a long time and wanted to get, how am I actually supposed to do that? Like, how am I supposed to use the ruler? How am I, like, what are the, because I've been, I taught myself and um, I want to do the right things. Right. And we don't always trust our skill set. And you may watch sure. a video and you may be like, mm, I think I did it right, but I'm not sure. So it's nice to get in person. Yeah. So you're going to make, you're gonna make a quilt cool top. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're going to make a quilt cool top uh, by the end of the class. And then we have some other classes that kind of. Um, teach you how to do machine quilting, how to do that with your walking foot. So you're just doing straight lines. So how to do binding. So all of the ways to finish it. But a lot of people are like, I really want to get this part nailed down, the piecing the top. So we have a class for you. Perfect. All right. Okay. There's lots of open sews. Check out our website, blah, blah, blah. All the things. <laughs> okay. So we have a lot of information to cover. So we're going to go and we're going to go real fast. Yep. With that said, Caveat, as always, what we are saying is not the end-all be-all of the conversation. You may have a varying opinion, and that is okay. What you do works for you. How we handle it works for us. We're going to kind of look at it from either side. Do what works best for you. Mm -hmm. There is no right or wrong in quilting. Again, Shauna Decky was made up. There are mm -hmm. no quilt police. Never Nobody's have coming. been, never Nobody's will coming be. to lock you up. Um, however, if somebody comes knocking on your door saying that your seams are wrong, call the real cops. Because that's getting real weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's getting real weird. Uh, anyway, so when it comes to fabric prep, you've got a couple things that we need to really consider washing and wa pre washing your fabric, starching right. your fabric, right. and then pressing, ironing your fabric. Right. Okay. Some of these things are, I would say, optional. All yes. of them can be optional. Sure. If you so desire. You could take it right off the bolt and start cutting it. Right. Um, probably the one of the most contentious part of all of this is the washing part, but mm -hmm. I almost jumped over a very important part here. Um, something that's a really good key to this whole process is checking color fastness of your fabric right? before you do any of it. Because if you've got fabric from a friend who mm -hmm. says, hey, I've got this fabric, I know you quilt, here you go, you don't know where that came from. Right, you and it tends good. to be that you get stuff that's old. Older Possibly. stuff, right? You don't, you don't know. Is it, it could old? Have been moms, moms, moms. Right, that's been exactly. There since... And they're like, "I'm cleaning out the basement. Please take all this stuff." That's great. Has it been washed before? So now I'm putting other fabrics with it, mm -hmm. and I pre-wash, or I don't, or mm -hmm. whatever. I don't know the you know what has been done with this fabric, and um, the fabric now is a lot better in regards to color, uh, fastness, color yeah. fastness and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, you, you, so you know, if, if it is a new from quilt shop, you know, quilt shop quality mm -hmm. cotton, you're probably not going to struggle with any of those, but you don't know on those things that are given. Right. You, you never know. really know. I mean, again, we use high quality stuff here. That's all we sell. I'm not necessarily concerned about it. However, if you're still not comfortable or confident in what you're buying and what that means, check the color fastness. How do you do that? Okay. Couple methods. The I saw two. Mm -hmm. um, one that you have talked about before, mm -hmm. where you cut a piece of fabric. Yeah. So you cut a chunk off of a of a corner. It's you know, a swatch. A little swatch of fabric, 
and you put that into a microwave safe bowl, cup, mm-hmm. whatever, with some uh, water and a little bit of soap. Mm-hmm. Put that into the microwave because you really want this water to get hot and see how the um, fabric is going to react. Mm-hmm. Now, first of all, you're never ever going to put your quilt into the microwave, but and you most shouldn't. of the time, please don't. Most of the time, we even when we launder fabric, we are doing it in cold. Right. We're, you know, we're not doing it in this super hot water. But what it is going to tell you is if there is a lot of extra dye in this. So when you excess dye, when you take it out, if the water is red, mm-hmm. um, you might want to think about whether or not you want to pre-wash that. Also, if you're going to pre-wash that piece, you really should pre-wash everything so that they all have been pre-shrunk at the same time. Right. So, um, so, so you before can... we go into that, though, as mm-hmm. far as the testing of the color, mm-hmm. the couple things I saw was put it in hot water for five minutes. So if you put it sure. in the microwave for a minute and a half yeah. in a small bowl of water, it's going to be boiling hot. That's right. hot enough. You don't have to put it in there for 20 minutes. That's insane. Right. You want the water hot. And then you test it on a paper towel and see if it transfers that dye. The other option is to soak that same swatch like that in cold water for an hour mm. and then blot test yeah, that. Well, on and that, paper towel just that to makes say. actually more sense because that's how it will probably be treated. Most likely. Right. Um, so you can put it, that makes more sense. Mm-hmm. Nobody's boiling their quilt. Not normally. Um, but, but, you know, I, I do feel like. You know, we've all we've always been told like wash things as hot as that particular fabric allows. So most things, because you want to get the dirt and the all the stuff out, right? And hot water is going to do that better than cold water will. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a lot of things now that help us and make it so that cold water will also work because of the the different detergents and things that we use. So right, because we've come a long way from 1942. Right. And how things right. are processed and handled. So right. it's okay. We can change our mindsets a little bit. Yeah. All right. So as far as washing and don't wash. Mm-hmm. All right. So you've tested it. You, it's color safe. It's not bleeding. Cool. Or, oh, it's bleeding. So now I need to wash it. Right. Either way, it doesn't matter. People pre-wash for a couple different reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, and let's talk about those. One of them being chemical sensitivities. Mm-hmm. If you have a sensitivity to chemicals, be it the dyes, be it the softeners that they put in it, the you know UV protecting stuff, you may want to wash it out before you work with it. Right. Completely reasonable and fair. Um, I don't think that that's necessarily true for who you're gifting it to because sure. you could launder it before you gift it. Absolutely. But if you personally, as I'm using it, I'm going to break out because right. of something, then you want to definitely wash launder it so that, so that you're not uh, subjecting yourself to right. that. Um, if you're working with older wash fabrics, like you were saying, mm-hmm. somebody gifted this stuff to you, some of it's been washed, some of it's not been washed, maybe you can't tell the difference. Right. You're going to want to wash that because you want everything you're working with to be consistently the same. Also, they had a cat. Also, they had a cat. And I would die. Right. My head would go. <laughs> so, yeah, in those cases, before he starts working with something, like seriously, when we get a quilt in that we, the customer says, you know, or we know, for for instance, mm-hmm. possibly that this person has a cat. I write on the box, "Cat, Jason, don't touch." Right, <laughs> like you know, and, and not that like because it doesn't bother any of the rest of us, but it's going to bother him immediately. Right. So, so and I, which at that point I know that, and I'll, I'll load the quilt, and then I'm going to go wash my hands. Right, and anytime I work with the quilt, flattening and all that stuff, then I'm going to go wash my hands. Right. But, you know, that's what it is. It's not that big of a deal. Or we'll he'll take two right. Allegra and he'll get over it. <laughs> he'll just move on through, right? Deal with it. <laughs> um, we all so, have our ways. Um, and the other reason you would probably want to wash it for sure is if you're working with, you know, a variety and quality of fabrics. Mm-hmm. Again, not knowing the quality of them. Right. You've purchased them all from the same store. It's all the same line. None of them's bleeding. You're okay with this. Then run with it. Right. You bought several different ones from several different stores. And this one seems a little weird. I'm not sure what to do with that. Wash them. Make sure they're good. Um, I'm also rethinking. You know, you probably could launder that one piece and then starch it and then, you know, and still work it in with some of your other. You very well could. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to the whole, there's no rules in quilting. Right. Now, again, these are just maybe some things to consider best Mm -hmm. practices. If you're going to do one, do all the same. Yeah. All that. Um, When you're washing it and you're washing out all the excess, you know, 
chemicals and or production of the fabric stuff, excess dyes, what have you. The other thing it's doing is it's loosening the weave of that fabric. Mm -hmm. So hand piecers. Who's a hand right. piecer? I'm not. No, I'm but there, there are hand piecers and hand quilters that prefer to wash their fabric because mm -hmm. it's easier than to, it's easier for it to Slip. stretch in a certain way. If right. you want to do um, like English paper piecing, maybe it's better. I, I don't know. I don't, I so correct me if I'm wrong. But if you do English paper piecing, maybe you want it to stretch a little bit. Right. Maybe you don't. I don't know. Um, but it's going to make it a little easier for that needle to slip between the weave. Right. Makes it a little easier for hand piecing. If you're using a sewing machine, your machine don't care. No. It's going to smash right through mm -hmm. there and do a stitch and move on with its mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, consider how you're piecing it together. That may make a, you know, help you make that decision. Right. Also, fabric shrinking. Mm -hmm. Shrinkage. Right. So. In the words of George Costanza. Yeah. I was in the pool. <laughs> I was in the pool. Yeah. I was in the pool. <laughs> Right. Shrinkage. Right. No, not the same. Not the same. Not the same. <laughs> so we, the the thing is that things are going to sh shrink at different rates, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So if you piece them all together and then wash it, right. it's all going to shrink at the same time mm -hmm. and it's different levels and it's fine. Um. I can't get over George Costanza. I'm trying so hard. <laughs> I broke her. I'm sorry, <laughs> but it was funny. So the uh, yeah, so, so, so uh, I just wash it all at once because right. I'm not going to pre-shrink my batting. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to wash the batting. Um, no. So in my opinion, it's better to just do it all at one time. This sure, is my absolutely. Opinion. And again, it, a lot of the times you can find information on fabrics and their shrink rate. Usually, it's between one and three percent. Even the newer battings are, they list them at either from 0% because they've pre-shrunk them to mm -hmm. 1 to 3%. It's not a huge shrink rate. It's there's, always worth looking into that stuff. There's even like um, washable wool uh -huh. that is pre-shrunk. Yes. So wool tends to shrink yes. much differently than cotton and more one way than another. You know, like there, there's different things that go into how something shrinks and like if it shrinks one way more than the other direction and all that kind of stuff. Um it's going to be much easier, in my opinion, to deal with um, after it's all put together. Right. If that is a possibility. And again, if is the big key word here. Even though we haven't experienced that being a problem because everything we've used has been of a higher quality, so the fabric doesn't draw up crazily. I have seen pictures of people that have had fabric that may have been of questionable quality, that their quilt is now this like weird, balled up, scrunched up horrificness. So it can happen. Just be aware of that. Usually if you're working with higher end quality stuff, you're not going to have that as much of a problem. So when we talk about it, don't get panicked. Oh my gosh, I have to wash all my fabric. It's not necessarily true. Okay? Okay. I just wanted to put that out there. Sounds good. All right. All right. So. Hi, Jackie. She's, Hello. She's late. You're lucky we have this on YouTube as well. You can go watch right. it later. Yeah. All right. Um, when not to wash. Now. I'm not saying, again, rule, but there are times that you may not want to wash your fabric. Mm -hmm. And those would be... Like for me, that's ever. Never. Never, ever do I want to wash my fabric. Never pre-wash it. I, I really just don't want to. Um, and I have been okay so far. Sure. So far, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I, have, um, I have a friend... And we do quilts of valor. So we have made tons of red, white, and blue quilts. Mm -hmm. Red, culprit for bleeding. Blue, culprit for bleeding. On to white, okay? And we throw in a couple of color catchers, and we don't have any trouble. Because we have to, we're um, required to launder them before they are gifted. Absolutely. So all of them have to be washed. So we have washed hundreds mm -hmm. at this point of not necessarily me. I wasn't personally there, but you see what I'm saying. Anyway, our group, they get laundered. We don't have any trouble. So, but this same friend then had a red batik mm -hmm. um, that she got from somewhere she doesn't know the brand, you know, or the, and, and she didn't test it. I mean, who tests anything? We've washed lots and lots of quilts. No big deal. So she made this quilt with this red batik. 
that bled all over everything. Mm -hmm. She then had to multiple times put it in a bathtub, like wash it. There, there's a process to try to get the bleeding from the other things out. So, um, uh, anyway, since then, I'm like, Batiks. Batiks are a reason to possibly wash. Right. Okay. But, um, but not to, I would also uh, not. We make lots of batik quilts. Okay. Batik quilts are on my bed. I have multiple quilts Absolutely. that go on my bed and they are all batik. Right. They have not bled onto anything else. There are loud colors. There's, you know, there's bright mm -hmm. colors. None of that has been a problem. So. So as far as washing what not to wash, I would expect not probably wash pre-cuts. Do not. I would wash have a hard time making myself take a jelly roll, bust the strap off it, throw it in the washing machine. Can't do it. It sounds like a horrible idea. That whole shrink conversation. It's a mess now. They're they've been pinking sheared on the edge to keep them from fraying, but they're still going to fray some. You're going to lose. It's the amount of fabric that you have is not going to be two and a half inches anymore. Right. And you're going to have trouble. So. Um, I, I don't pre-wash those. No. I, I don't pre-wash anything, you don't really. Pre -wash but anything. Um, I would not suggest any pre-cuts being pre-washed, except you, with the exception of you could probably get away with fat quarters. Yeah. Because they're large enough that you're not going to have, uh, you're not going to lose too Yeah, much you're of not going to start a block off a fat quarter. Usually you're going to cut that into smaller pieces. Exactly. So if you have a larger piece of fabric, so say a fat eighth or maybe even 10 inch squares, possibly. Mm-hmm. Possibly. Yeah. Again, depending on what it is that you're going to do with that material. So. so I did touch on color catchers just a little bit. Color catchers are a product from Shout. You find them in the laundry aisle. They look like dryer sheets. You throw them into the washing machine mm -hmm. and uh, washer fills up, washes everything, and all of those dyes that get suspended in the water, the color catcher gets those before they get thrown onto anything else. Mm -hmm. I'm also talking about this like you're going to launder it in a washing machine. A lot of people put launder their quilts in the bathtub and do different things. Um, I'm also a believer in utility quilts. If it can't go on the washing machine and I'm gifting it to somebody who has a baby, like, what am I thinking, right? Yeah, that's oh, you've got to take it and put it in the bathtub and you've got to do all these things. That's you, that's a little crazy to ask yeah. to think that that's how that's going to work. Right. Um, every time, all the time, they've puked on it. They, you know, like there's a they've lot of lived on it. They've lived on this blanket. Like we want it to be able to be laundered. So, in those cases, it's nice if you gift them with a here's a, a color catcher, mm -hmm. a box of those. So, um, and then that that works out nicely. They know to and and usually if I have a culprit, which I mean red or blue then I'll throw in two or three into the color catcher, in, into the washing machine, because it'll take all those before it gets thrown onto your white. Next, there are other um, things, Retain, Synthropol, and these are uh, products that you can purchase that will help like seal in that color so right. that it doesn't uh, get on everything. Um, Synthropol, if you've ever done any tie-dye, mm -hmm. anything, it helps to set that dye into the fabric. Um, and retain does the same conversation. Uh, you can get this stuff anywhere in any laundry aisle. Like it's all over the place. Is it? Because I've. Um, if not, if uh, Amazon has it, I mean, like. Sure. Uh, why wouldn't I? Don't know if I'd carry it. Because let's be honest, it's not really that big of a deal here. Because I don't wash my laundry or my fabric. <laughs> he doesn't wash his I don't laundry. Wash, I don't wash my laundry. No, he does wash it. He I does do. his own laundry. Anyway. Anyway. Well, the point of it is, is that if you again are concerned and you want to make sure that that dye is set in there properly. Retain and or Synthropol or both. Uh, there's customers I know that use both. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to color catchers, all the things just to ensure that the dye stays and the color so, lasts and all that stuff. If you were to find a, uh, you find a great deal on a piece of backing online, mm -hmm. and you're not sure of the quality, and you're not sure if this is going to bleed, and you don't, you can't cut a chunk out because this is my backing. Mm -hmm. All those things, doing the retain and the center pot, either or or both would be a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and finally, the last thing as far as the washing conversation is, if you're going to wash your fabric, a helpful tip that we've heard of is doing a stay stitch on the uh, the 
outer edge or the raw edge? Right, the the raw edge. So if it has selvage, you don't need to stay stitched because that already is tightly woven enough. Right. Um, but along the edges that are not, or if you have fat quarters and you want to, you know, go around the whole mm -hmm. thing, coming in a quarter of an inch, it just helps so that if it's going to fray, it's only going to fray to that point, and hopefully you don't have something that, you know, cuts in too far. Right. So that's a helpful tip for that. Is Reducing wash. some rabble. Rabble. Rabble, rabble. Mm -hmm. um, and as you've said multiple times, colors to watch for in the whole bleeding world of fabrics, the reds. The dark blues slash navy. Right. I also read deep purples mm -hmm. because they have to heavily. Well, they have that. red and blue. You got both so, of them in there. Right. So yeah. um, be careful for those if you have them. Don't so, be afraid to color test them for fastness. Right. All the things. Next, starch. She just wanted to get to the starch conversation, guys. I mean, we're she we're, yeah. loves her starch. No, I, okay. So starch. All right. So I do you do, have to wash before you starch? No, but can you? Yes. yes but you don't have to. So if you do pre-wash, then a lot of times then you do have to add some starch back in because now to get it to lay nice and flat, you're going to then add some starch. So, um, but I use straight off the bolt and then use my faultless heavy duty spray starch. Mm -hmm. um, or, and I forgot to bring this from home, um, my jug of Stay Flow, which oh. is a blue jug. I, I like to show people like they can see when I'm holding on Just to it. look at it. See yeah. this jug of staple? So the jug of staple flow is really nice. You can put that into a mister bottle. You can put it in a tub and just, you know, use it. That Dunk your fabric. So, mm -hmm. that, but, um, and then there are starch alternatives like Best Press, which is nice for, uh, for me, it is nice for after you've pieced something and you need those starched pieces to lay flat. That it's nice to just a, a light spritz of that to get help with that. But a lot of people use Best Press all the time. That's mm -hmm. that is their starch. Right. Um, this is milder, um, so it's not going to give it that real stiff stiffness that I want, which is why I go with this. Um, when I find the one that's got the heaviest, which is the blue cans. And um, if you're the one who keeps going to my local Walmart and buying all of them, could you please stop doing that? Because I really need some starch. <laughs> you tell them the trips and tricks, they're going to do it, Danielle. I know. So, um, so I do not starch an entire three-yard piece. I have yardage that I'm going to work with, and I'm going to cut, you know, I look at my pattern, I see that I'm cutting 10 inch squares, so maybe I'm gonna cut a 20 inch piece so I can get my tens out of that, or, mm -hmm. you know, and then I starch that piece. Um, I starch it until it is soaking wet. I starch from the top, I spray until it is soaking wet. I flip over, I look at the backside, and I make sure there is nothing that is dry. Mm -hmm. um, all the way to the edge. If you are trying to not get your board wet and you're going down the middle, you're going to get wavy because this part ha has shrunk a little bit or pulled in a little bit, and now this is not. So you're going to have some unevenness. You want evenly... So, put a towel down, put the thing on top of it. Learned a great tip this week. Go to the dollar store. Oh, okay. Go there right now. No, no not while you're um, driving. And they're buy tablecloths okay. that are, you know, a package of them for a dollar. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm talking about like the like plastic, mm -hmm. you know, like no fuzzy on the back. Just a clear plastic. You're going to use it at a picnic and you're going to take the whole thing and throw it away. Mm -hmm. Put this over your ironing board. Okay. Put this on the floor too, but on don't slip on it. Okay, whatever. But what is really cool is it's not soaking into the towel. It's not soaking into the um, oh, so it has to ironing the board. Fabric. It's got to go into the fabric or it goes into the next piece of fabric because, you That's know, because there's this liquid just suspended on top of the plastic. Thank you, Sandy. Wonderful. Um, yeah. So you starch. Um, I also found that if you then lay the next piece on top and keep starching, that bottom one, I mean, you're not hurting anything by doing that. And then you can take three or four pieces and go hang them. And that way you're kind of saving some time too. So um, Vicki has a, a recipe over here. So go get you some vodka 
and uh, oh, that works too. One for the fabric, one for me. <laughs> one for the fabric, one for me. Um, one for me, I'll be back. <laughs> So I starch everything from the top. I make sure that it is it is wet all the way through, and then I hang it. So then after I've gotten several pieces done, then I start from the beginning, and I press from the back side. So people say, number one, they say to me, um, but then all that stuff gets on your iron, and that's gross, and uh, you, you mess up your iron. I have iron, iron. I really don't care. I have iron cleaner for a reason. That's why it's there. That's why I, made it. I just clean the iron if it gets on there and gets gross, right? Then the uh, also if it's gonna make some if it's gonna make some flakes or mm -hmm. anything like that, um, it's on the back side of the fabric. So again, I don't care if it makes a mess on the fabric um, because it's on the back side. Yep. So when right, people so say you really spend a lot of time prepping your fabric. I mean, it's like going to be days before I actually get to sew anything. And I'm like, yeah, I know. That's okay. I mean, that's but part I of the don't, process. I do not spend time matching socks because that's ridiculous. That's too much effort. So, uh, so I take that time that I would spend on, you know, actually putting the laundry away. We don't need to do that. <laughs> the, the, no, matching socks. I do. I don't care. I will wear two different socks. I don't. Mm -hmm. Does not matter to me. Um, and, uh, but I'm using that time to starch my fabrics. So a couple important things to remember when you starch. The point of the starch is to add enough so that it, when it dries, it makes your fabric like a piece of paper, right. like a hard piece of paper, like almost uh, craft paper. When you do that, it allows for better accuracy because mm -hmm. things aren't going to give as much and shift on the bias and things like that. It's going to stay fairly straight. I mean, your fabric has give to it. You when know, you wash it, it's going to uh, give uh, it's gonna back, be... it's going to be pretty again. So um, the other thing to remember is that when it comes to much like washing, like you wouldn't want to wash a pack of pre-cuts, mm -hmm. starching is going to do the same thing. If right. you get moisture on the fabric, the fabric is going to just draw up. That's what happens. So shift a little, things are going to be right. a little bit different. If you're going to starch, starch the larger bulk of your fabric first. So I need to cut some 18 inch strip off of this. I'm going to work with that and get all my pieces. Starch that before mm -hmm. you subcut it down to the smaller pieces. Right. Work in bulk. You do not make a block and then go, man, I, before I put this into the with to the quilt, now I'm going to starch it? No. Mm -hmm. Because what ha will happen is now it's going to start to shrink and things are not going to be the right size. Right. Shower curtain, $1.25 from the dollar store, protecting your floor. That's a good idea, Eileen. And um, Ruth says this is what she does. Cool. So, um... Uh, what was I saying? Oh, I don't know. so I still will starch pre-cut uh, or fat quarters. Mm -hmm. I will starch fat quarters all day. Um, I actually am now working on a quilt just this week that I needed 10 inch squares um, or I have 10 inch squares. I'm sorry. I'm kind of all over. So I have 10 inch squares and my pattern says start with a nine and a half inch block and I go, oh, cool. So because I am going to cut this down to nine or nine and a half, whatever it says, um, I can starch that 10 inch block. Right. Know what your it, project's going to look like first. Right. First okay. of all, I find that there are a lot of patterns that you need 10 inch squares, but all the pre-cut 10 inch squares are pinking sheared or something, and you don't actually have a full 10 inches. So I wish that pattern writers, and they are starting to come around to figuring this out, to going, okay, let's start with a nine inch block or let's start, but you know, they're trying to get you every bit of that fabric. Um, it's just that I, I, I'm very much a perfectionist and accuracy is like so important to me that when that block doesn't measure 10 inches, I want to call the company because right. I'm mad. <laughs> right. Well, aside from that nonsense, we don't yeah. want to yell at no okay, That's fine. how it works out. There are some big concerns that people have had for using starch. And I want to talk about that real quick. Um, the biggest concern people have is uh, bugs being attracted to starched fabric. Um, the main culprit that people point at is silverfish. If you have silverfish, silverfish, that was weird, fish. known to be in your home, silverfish love starchy things. So, yes, they will be attracted to starch, but they're also attracted to starch found in paper, i.e. books, mm -hmm. i.e. photographs, mm -hmm. i.e. wallpaper, mm -hmm. food that you've spilled on your clothes, so dirty laundry, all these things. So I wouldn't go home and starch everything and leave it out in the open air for years because, yeah, you're, you're inviting hazard at that point. 
Um, so start what you need for the project you're currently on. If you have to put that project on hold, airtight bins are a wonderful option to store the fabric in, so that way things can't get to it and destroy the fabric. Right. So, so um, I want to uh, say a couple things. So Jackie said she loves GE Designs. Mm -hmm. So the one that I'm working on right now is June. That's the name of it. You know, uh, GE. She all oh, the they tend to name everything. Like by someone's name, right. like there's hope. She's very much you know. female names. For, anyway, for um, but this one is the first one that I really love because you are cutting it down. The second thing, because I do love GE design patterns, um, I will go and buy a third of a yard mm -hmm. of a whole bunch of different fabrics rather than buying a pre-cut 10 inch squares that aren't really 10. Mm -hmm. So my third of a yard uh, is 12. I can get four uh block four 10 inch squares out of that one cut mm -hmm. and they are full 10 inches so and i get to use my ge patterns so the stripology patterns and hi to jason and um joanne says this is a lot of extra work and using best press works for her and that is what i wanted to get to this whole time thank you joanne is do what works for you i am a perfectionist and i want things to be so precise I, I don't want anyone to be like me. I want you to be okay with the fact that I lost a point here or this is a little bit crooked and, and be okay with it because these are handmade items and they're beautiful just the way they are. You do not have to go to such extremes. Um, but because I'm a perfectionist and I am continuing to grow my skills, mm -hmm. I'm not where I want to be yet. Um, I have to take every measure that I can to make it so that I um, do this really well. So um, I did have someone the other day, because we are making six inch blocks and in in the hundred block that I'm doing, ask if I was going to glue my, my pieces together because there are things out there for precision piecing. And you can use this product and you glue the pieces together and press them before you stitch. Hmm. And I'm going, oh my gosh. Here's three more steps. And I went, you know, I'm not doing, I'm not doing two inch finished squares that have. No, the, that's a whole nother level. Of, you know. Not for me, but. Um, you know, like Jason, you know, I'm not doing <laughs> <laughs> very tiny pieces that have lots of pieces in them and I need them to be perfect, you know, all that. So I'm not going to glue. <laughs> I'm just going to go with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a perfectionist who doesn't match her socks. Yes, absolutely. Because I really, that is not something I care about. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that, that's, oh, uh, thanks, Rita, for pointing that out. That is so smart. Deborah, do you need to cover the ironing board and the floor? I mean, it's still a starch type substitute. It could leave a residue. <coughs> yeah. If it's concerned with that, mm -hmm. it wouldn't hurt. Um, yeah. It's more just that over time, you're going to go, man, now I've got to wash this thing. Because you'll just, you'll, you'll find that it's getting a little stiff or whatever. Um, I don't think it's that necessary, but I don't cover it when I'm just pressing things and I use, you know, like best press or something at that point. I don't cover it. Um, I don't, I don't cover my wool mat. I know I should. Your wool mat was really great when you're working on things because you're getting heat. When you're from, ironing. When you're pressing. So when nobody's ironing here. We're right, pressing. pressing. So because you're getting the heat from the bottom and the top at the same time and you get that block really nice and flat pretty quickly. Um, but if you are starching on top of that, some those wool mats, you can't really clean them very well. So uh, I've seen lots of people who will put it like put it in a pillowcase or put it, you know, some or a some semblance of pillowcase type that then at least that layer is you know can be thrown in the washing machine pretty easily right okay so last and not least and within time frame we have the conversation of ironing or pressing mm -hmm. do you need to of course you don't have to um right but let's just say from this let's just say from the beginning you didn't pre-wash boom you not, you're not going to starch boom. you you're going to use best press as you go you don't want to go through all that nonsense Fine. You, I would suggest that you press your fabric at least somewhat. Um, the way our fabric is folded, first of all, around the bolt, mm -hmm. but then we fold it up and over. So it makes a triangle almost, and it looks really nice on the shelf, but it's going to leave a crease in your fabric. Yep. So, or you buy fat quarters that were folded really beautifully. 
right? And now they are folded really beautifully and you've got to kind of undo that, right? So um, you've got to press them out before you start cutting. I do not like to have a piece that I'm working with that has, you know, a, a previous seam or... If bolt, you have a bolt, crease bolt, not, from not a when you had cut it off the bolt and then you didn't straighten that and press that before you start cutting, you're going to get waves in your fabric. Um, we, of course, are then going to blame the ruler that we used because I cut it and I've got this wild thing that it's not from the ruler. It's because you didn't press it. Mm -hmm. Now, when you press, hot iron works. If you're working with bulk material, then steam, please, by all means, steam it. Spray yeah, a little bit can. of water or use the steam setting on your iron if mm -hmm. you got it. Right. It's got to be a hot iron. And also the wool mat really helps for pressing out to get the creases mm -hmm. a little more flat so that we don't have to worry about that. Don't aggressively iron. Have you ever seen the the, the videos of the aggressive housekeeping things where the guy run around angry oh, yeah, doing yeah. things? Yeah. Um, this is what I, I see in my mind when I say aggressive ironing. Mm -hmm. Don't want to iron. The, you don't need to do that. No. It's a very gentle hold of iron push it out, you know, kind of mm -hmm. crossed it. Right. When we're, one place. when we have blocks and we have seams, you really want to press. That's, and sometimes people think, oh, they're from a different region than me. They say press, I say iron. No, these are two different things. They both use that same thing, that same object, but one, you're ironing, you're pushing the fabric. Right. And, and you can do this with, um, a sleeve, mm -hmm. you know, on your shirt. On my that's, shirt sleeve, yeah. That's not that, you you want to press, you want to iron it, you want to get that nice and, anyway. But you do not want to do this with a block that you have now made and it, is, it needs to finish at exactly six and a half inches and I've got it and it's perfect. And then you iron it and you've stretched it because you're adding heat. If you're adding steam, you're adding a little bit of liquid. You add heat, liquid, right. And you push, and you're going to make that larger. And right. it, and the thing is, you're not going to make it larger evenly. Okay, <laughs> you're not. It's going to be bigger this way, and not so much this way, and whatever. So, um, yeah, it, when you are working with blocks, you now want to press. Right. Pick it up. Put it, put down. it down. Pick it up. Put it down. <laughs> okay. You don't want to push. Right. You do not want to do any of that. You want to nicely do the thing. Again, and when it's hot and you're adding steam, you are giving it that pliability. Mm -hmm. So also keep in mind that if it's still fairly warm from the iron, don't start pulling on it. You're mm -hmm. just going to stretch it and you're going to be mad. Right. Not not worth that, the headache and the anger. Don't. Anger Jackie, doesn't belong in there. Jackie washes her, you know, ironing cover mm -hmm. every month. Hey. Good idea. That's wonderful. Not a bad habit to be in. Yep. For what, sure. Whatever method works good for you is what I say go with. Because yeah. remember, I am not whoever you said. Shauna Decky. Right. And if I you don't know who that police. is, you need to go back and watch last week's episode. Also, you yeah, you, you are not the cool police, so don't tell me how to live my life. <laughs> you don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> I say that to inanimate objects. So the stay flow told me that I needed to mix it with water. And I was like, you don't know me. You don't know me. I'm going to use look. it straight up. And then I put that into my Mr. Bottle and I clogged the whole bottle. And I went, oh, well, maybe they were a little bit right. Maybe yeah. I needed a little bit of water. water. Anyway. Oops. I hope I made you chuckle. Live there. and learn. But yeah. Live and learn. This is my life. Anyway. All right. We do have a new product from, now this is also made from Faultless. Same but company. this is um, Magic. Mm -hmm. uh, premium Quilting and Crafting Spray. So, fragrance and flake free, get your wrinkles out, flattens your seams, reduces stretch. Um, does it reduce stress? Because I might spray some on myself. If it reduces stretch. You like a vacation. In my opinion, oh. if it reduces stretch, it also reduces stress huh. at the same TM. time. That's our saying. You can't have it. It magic. is really hard to say anyway. Come so, at me. improves accuracy for cutting and sewing. Um uh, I haven't used it yet. I'm really I haven't excited, either, so but, I have to give it a whirl. Um, it is made for quilt shops to carry, so we've gotten this in. And it's, it's perfect for quilting, napkin folding. Oh, well, I've got some napkins and to fold. And tablescaping, sewing um, a needlepoint, 
Uh, yeah, so anyway, so we're going to give this a shot. There was a question about starch I think we should address before we wrap it up for the day. Does stay flow stain the fabric? Here we go. Oh. Any of these could potentially stain fabric, possibly, depending on sure. how it reacts with the fabric. So, mm -hmm. again, if you don't know the fabric, origin, quality, all that stuff, test it. Yeah. So, and also, I've had, there's things like, uh, I've had some customers who have some art gallery fabric. Mm -hmm that they starched and it's left this weird thing. And, and it was more than one person who had that. I have never had this problem. And you, you work and with I art gallery. work so. with art gallery fabric. And then I'm like, am I soaking it? Like, mm -hmm. you know, putting so much starch on it that it's evenly starched. Am I hanging it? And that's what worked better is like, what part of it is the problem, if you will. Um, I think, that's kind of, you have to figure out what works for you. Stay flow does not, I have not had any trouble with the staining fabric. Um, and I use it frequently. Mm -hmm. Uh, or you could make your own starch, get some vodka. You can't, you absolutely can't. That is not, floor. that is not a joke. For you. Okay. Um, it is starch, uh, yeah, because you have to have vodka that is starch based, yes, potato, um, potato based, potato. potato vodka. There we go. Mm -hmm. Um, and you probably don't want that's flavored, you know, in some way because it's going to make that's it gonna just be not right. weird. Don't do that. Um, but anyway, I don't know that it's any less expensive. You know, I mean, I don't know the price of vodka versus the price of faultless. So, and no, we don't carry this. This is, you know, um, I wish we did. <laughs> Mostly, I just need it by the truckload to my house. Right, that's more the conversation. <laughs> but we do have this in stock. If you guys want to give that a shot, we've mm -hmm. been, got some good reviews from several people on it. So. Anyway, all right, I've got nothing else to add to that today. Okay. A lot of information. You have questions, send us a message. We'll talk to you about it. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in the mm -hmm. shop, ask us. Come by and see me today. Buy a machine. I have long arms. So, so she said she has gray goose. Well, that were, I, I don't know. You have to look at if, if gray goose is a potato vodka, it will work. And then you Google how to make. Somehow, Patty knows that vodka is $6.99. <laughs> well, maybe she just went and bought some. Do you have some? Are you bringing some in? Anyway. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Other vodka time. being $6.99 versus this is like two bucks. But if you can't it. find this, you might have to buy the dang vodka. Mm, well, maybe. You know? We'll see how that works out. Uh, anyway, anyway, so Monday Flash Sale, make sure you check that out on the website. Starts at 9 a.m., runs all day. We'll put something mm -hmm. fantastic mm -hmm. on sale. Mm -hmm. Wednesday live sale here again at 6.30. 6. <laughs> and until. And day. until. Pick a time. On Six. Wednesday, we will be here for Fabric TV at 6 p.m. 6. That's Central time. Yeah. Anyway. Thanks, Matt. Go sign up for a class. Come take a Come class. It'll be fun. Hang out with us. And. And. Don't forget. Mark your calendar. Two weeks from today. Uh, January 28th. Mm -hmm. Is. Local. Quilt. Support your local quilt shop day. And International Mystery Quilt Day. Make sure you're here for oh, yeah. it in person. Be because here with your you quilt. You want to see the next month. And if you, you really don't have do. a quilt, you don't have a quilt, it doesn't matter. Come anyway. Come anyway. Yeah. Why not? Doesn't we have matter. A space for it. Come, Come see out. it. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Ready? All right. Get out of here? Okay. Right. Bye. Bye.